In this video, we're going to start looking at conversion factors and how to use those in calculations. When you hear conversion factors, you're probably thinking factor label. Yay! I know you're excited. Um, we've got two different conversion factors. We've got molar mass. That's the mass of one mole of atoms in grams. And that's what we use to relate our mass of a substance to the moles of the substance. So we know that we can find that on the periodic table for the individual elements. And the numbers on the periodic table, remember, it is the mass of one atom in AMU. And it is also the mass of one mole of atoms in grams. So that would be uh, one mole, which is uh, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in grams. And so that mass on the periodic table, when we use that in grams, that is one mole of whatever that is. The other one that we want to talk about for conversion factors is going to allow us, it's Avogadro's number, and it allows us to relate how many things there are, things like atoms and molecules, to the number of moles. So we want to use that from the reference table. I would suggest that you go ahead and look at that. It's on the front page, so you know where it is. And we use uh, Avogadro's number, one mole being 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things to convert from chemistry things like atoms and molecules. Remember we talked about covalent compounds being molecules that are made up of atoms. And then with ionic compounds, those are called formula units. So when we have a, a uh, formula for an ionic compound like NaCl, sodium chloride, that gives us that one-to-one -one ratio of sodium ions to chloride ions. That's called a formula unit. We can't really count all of the sodium and chloride ions in a salt crystal or anything else. So those are formula units, and they're made up of ions. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in class. But what we want to remember is moles are the central idea here. So if we want to go from mass to moles, we're going to use our molar mass or from moles to mass, we'll also use that same conversion factor. If we want to go from moles to particles or particles to moles, we'll use Avogadro's number. So now let's look at some example problems using those conversion factors. So here's one. Go ahead and read the problem. It's asking us to find how many carbon atoms are in 5.10 moles of carbon. So think back to those unit conversion days at the beginning of the semester. What we want to do is we want to start with the number from our problem, which is 5.10 moles. And I'm going to encourage you to use the uh, abbreviations for the, the symbols for the elements or the compounds when we're going through this unit, because we're going to build on this further when we get to Unit 9, which is called stoichiometry. I know you're going, what the heck is that? But I'll explain it to you when we talk about it in class. But you will want to keep the symbols for the elements or for the compounds in your problems, because we're going to start building on this and it'll get more complicated. So go ahead and set up your conversion factor. Remember just the parentheses with the line in the middle, just like we did at the beginning of the semester. And remember to think about your units first. So we're trying to get from moles of carbon to carbon atoms. So moles of carbon on the bottom, because that will cause this to cancel. And we want to get to carbon atoms on the top. I usually put atoms of carbon. And so uh, we know that if we have one mole of carbon, we have Avogadro's number of atoms, so that's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon per mole. And then our moles will cancel, and we'll be left with atoms of carbon. And when you punch that into your calculator, you should end up with 3.07 times 10 to the 24th. And let me just give you a reminder here on how we're going to put that in the calculator. So remember, you want to use that 5.10 times 6.02 E23. You don't want to do times E23, just E23. And then remember to think about sig figs in your final answer. So that there were three sig figs in our problem. So we'll count one, two, three in our answer. And then we use that next digit to determine whether or not to round that seven. All right? So let's give this another try. 
All right, so in this problem, we're given the same 5.10 moles of carbon, but we're being asked instead of for uh, the atoms, we're being asked for the mass. So let's go ahead and set that up. So we've got 5.10 moles of carbon. And again, we're just going to set up our conversion factor. And we want to go from moles of carbon to mass of carbon. Our unit for mass is grams. And we know that in order to find the number of grams in one mole of any of our elements, we're going to look at that molar mass on the periodic table. And that tells us that one mole of carbon has a molar mass of 12.01 grams. So we're going to multiply by the numbers that are on the top, divide by what's on the bottom. And that would just end up giving us, as you can see down here, 5.10 times 12.01. Uh, we're going to cancel our moles of carbon, so that'll leave us with grams of carbon, which is our mass, so we've got the correct unit. And then with our sig figs, we'll end up with 61.3 grams of carbon. All right? Let's try another one. It's going to start getting a little more interesting now. This one is asking us for the mass of 2.50 moles of water. So let's go ahead and start with our number from our problem. We've got 2.50 moles of water. Hopefully you remember our formula for water. And we're going to have to set up a conversion factor to go from moles of water, so moles of water on the bottom to cancel, to grams of water on the top. Now the problem that we're going to run into here, and you may have already considered this, we don't have a formula for water on the periodic table but we can look up these individual elements. So pull out your periodic table so you can follow along with what I'm doing. What you want to do, this is going to be kind of similar to what we did when we figured out the valence electrons for Lewis structure. We're going to add up the molar mass of each of the atoms in our compound. So in this compound, we've got two hydrogens and one oxygen. So if you look at the molar mass of hydrogen, there are two of those, and each one of those is 1.008. So that's going to give us a total of 2.016. And then with oxygen, we've got 1, and it has a molar mass of 16. So we're just going to add that all up, and that tells us that 1 mole of water has a molar mass of 18.016 grams. So 1 mole and 18.016 grams. Remember that this number is the molar mass, and because it's a molar mass, it has a mass unit with it. That number will always go with the grams. So we're going to cancel our moles of water, and we're left with grams of water, which is good. That's what we want. And then when you punch that into your calculator, and you should, you will get 45.0 grams of water. All right? Make sure you're pausing and punching these in so you know that you're getting the correct answers. Let's try one more. This problem's asking us for the number of water molecules in 2.50 moles of water. So let's go ahead and set that one up. So 2.50 moles of water. Now when this is asking us for the number of water molecules, that should be saying to you, these are particles. When we're converting to molecules or formula units or atoms, we need Avogadro's number. So remember that that's on the front page of your packet. And so what you want to do is set up that conversion factor, make it extra long, that's a big number. And then we want the moles of water on top, so that will cancel our units here. And we want to go to water molecules. So I'm going to have to write out that whole word molecules because we've used MOL as an abbreviation for moles. So we know that in one mole of water, we have Avogadro's number of molecules, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And remember, our moles will cancel. We'll be left with molecules of water. And then when you put that into your calculator, you should get 1.51 times 10 to the 24th molecules of water. So let's look at our flow chart again to make sure that we know what's going on here. We've gone from mass to moles, 
I'm sorry, from moles to mass using molar mass. We've gone from moles to particles using Avogadro's number. So now we kind of know both sides of this flow chart. Let's see if we can put it all together and go from mass to moles and then moles to particles or vice versa. So let's try this first problem. All right, so in this problem, we're being asked to find the mass of 1.89 times 10 to the 24th molecules of ammonia. So think back to that flow chart or look in your notes. I'm sure you have it there. If we're being asked to find the mass, we're being given the molecules. So we're going to start with molecules. We're going to go from molecules to moles using Avogadro's number. Then we're going to go from moles to mass using the molar mass of ammonia. So let's go ahead and start by setting this up. We've got 1.89 times 10 to the 24th molecules of ammonia. And hopefully you remember from our covalent nomenclature stuff that ammonia is NH3, one of the ones you were supposed to memorize. And so we want molecules of ammonia on the bottom to cancel. Remember, you want to let the units guide where you are putting the units and then the numbers to figure out the right conversion factors. We're going to molecules, and our first step is to moles. So MOL, moles of NH3. And when we're talking about molecules, which are particles, we know that one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Our molecules will cancel. We'll be left with moles. But we're still being asked to find a mass, so we're going to set up one more conversion factor. So these will be two-step problems. We want moles of ammonia on the bottom to cancel. And then we know that we need to find our grams of ammonia since we're being asked for mass, and that needs to go on top. Now remember that when we have a compound, we've got to come over here and do a little calculation step. So we've got nitrogen, which is 14.01 and there is one of those, so that's going to give us a total of 14.01. And then for hydrogen, it has a molar mass of 1.008 times three of those in our formula, so that's going to be 3.024. When you add that up, that gives you 17.034. And remember, that number, that molar mass, is a mass. It goes with the grams, so we know that there are 17.034 grams of ammonia in one mole of ammonia. So now our moles will cancel. We'll be left with grams of ammonia. And remember, we're going to multiply the numbers on the top, divide by the numbers on the bottom. Remember to use that 6.022E23 to plug that into your calculator. And when you do punch that into your calculator, you will end up with I ended up with 53.5 grams of ammonia. Let's go back and just take a quick look at that flow chart and we'll talk about what we did. So we, st we started with our particles, our molecules of ammonia. We went from molecules to moles using Avogadro's number and then from moles to mass using molar mass. Let's try one more practice problem. All right, so in this one, it's giving us information about our mass of calcium chloride, and it's asking us to find how many formula units. So think back to that flow chart. We're going to start with our mass. We're going to go from mass to moles using our molar mass. So that's going to be our first step. And then the second step is going to be from moles to formula units using Avogadro's number. So let's start first of all with our mass from our problem, 18.5 grams of calcium chloride. Now here's another problem. This is an ionic compound. We have to think about the charges and making that compound neutral. So remember that calcium has a two plus charge. Chloride is a one minus. So we know in order to make that neutral, we have to have two pluses and two minuses. So it's going to be CaCl2. And then we're going to set up our conversion factor. So we need grams on the bottom, grams of CaCl2. And our first step is going to be to moles. So everything goes through moles of calcium chloride in this case. 
And we know that to find the molar mass, we're going to have to add that up. So let's come over here and do that little step. So I've got calcium, one calcium, and it has a molar mass of 40.08. And then for chlorine, I've got two of those. They each have a molar mass of 35.45. So that's going to be 70.90. And when I add that up, that's going to be 110.98. Okay, so make sure you're doing these on your calculator. Check behind me, you might find a mistake. Remember that the molar mass goes with the mass unit. So that goes with the grams. So in this case, it's on the bottom. In the last case, it was on the top. And then we want to put the one with the mole. So we know that one mole of calcium chloride is 110.98 grams. Our grams of calcium chloride will cancel and we're left with moles. And then we want to go from moles to formula units. So we need moles on the bottom to cancel the moles that are left. And then we want to go to formula units. Some people like to abbreviate this. I like to abbreviate it FUN because I know how much fun moles are. Some of you may have other abbreviations. And that's fine, but uh, for our sake, I will use FUN. So we know that we want to use, in order to go from moles to particles, formula units are a particle, then we are going to use Avogadro's number. So we know that one mole contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of calcium chloride. And so our moles here will cancel. I'm going to come down here and we'll be left with formula units of calcium chloride. And remember, multiply what is on the top, divide by what is on the bottom. And I got for this 1.00 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of calcium chloride. We'll do plenty of practice problems in class, so I'll see you then.